All right, so uh, next up, uh, we're going to do something called present value, which isn't anything crazy. All that means is that we're going to take our compound interest formula, and instead of solving for A, which we've done most of the all the time, we're now going to solve for the P, and that sometimes is called your present value. It is still called the principal. Some of these phrases or terms have multiple um, uh, words used to describe them. These letters, so. Uh, again, P is principal, also called your present value. All right. So, for example, uh, a loan of $5,000 at 12% per year compounded annually is due to be repaid in three years. How much is the present value, principal of the loan? All right. So, here's what we got going on is, again, we're going to use our compound interest formula. All right, so we got A is equal to P times 1 plus I. Again, this I could be a little R. They use both for rate, interest rate. All right, so there we have our compound interest formula. Now, here's what this is saying. A loan of $5,000 is to be paid back in three years. And so that means that's how much we're going to have to pay back in three years. The $5,000 is our A. And again, the whole point of what we're doing now is we're going to find the P. Now, uh, when we're dealing with our other variables here, I and N, again, keywords compounded annually. We didn't have that last time at our last lesson. That's the easier one. And so, again, when I'm looking at my interest rate, which is 12%, again, converting it to a decimal by dividing by 100%, I get 0.12. Because it's compounded annually, I don't have to do anything. It is the annual interest rate. And uh, now my N, whoops, my N value, again, which is the number of times the interest is added. Well, if it's compounded annually, that means it's only added after every year. And so there's three years. It's only being added once a year. So because it's compounded annually, I don't have to do anything special with my I and my N. Not like our next examples coming up. All right, but now what I can do again is substitute into my equation. All right, so I have my a is equal to uh, whoa. We we want to know a, so that's five thousand is my a. We're trying to find the p. Uh, I, in the brackets, I have my one plus my interest rate of zero point one two, and it's to the power of three. All right, well, I'm going to simplify uh, this expression over to the right beside P. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, well, do the brackets there. And so, whoops, I'm just going to add 1 plus 0 0.12. Well, that's going to be 1.12. And again, that's going to be to the power of 3. All right, well, I can simple uh, keep simplifying this exponent that I have here. And so, uh, again, I have my A value this time, 5,000 equals P. And then, uh, let's see, I take my 1.12 and I take it to the power of 3, and I end up with 1.4. All right. Now, this is the only part that's a little different than what we we've been doing, is that we have P times 1.14. And so, to get P by itself, because that's what we're trying to do here, I'm going to divide by 1.14. And what I do to one side, I got to do to the other. All right. And so finally, those 1.14s divide each other out. And so uh, if I take 5,000 and I divide it by 1.4, I end up with, uh, let's see here, 3,571. 0.43 and that is equal to p the present value that's the amount of money that you borrowed principal same thing called both all right so again that's uh we did follow the same steps we did before only we are just solving for a different variable all right of course we're gonna try a couple more of those guys so uh let's see here so how much money must carry invest today uh to have four thousand dollars in two years at 15 percent per year compounded monthly so again keywords here compounded monthly all right so i have my 
Compound interest formula, once again, A is equal to P uh, times 1 plus I to the power of N. All right. So, uh, again, getting my variables. How much money must we invest today, presently, or our principal is what we're looking at? Uh, this person wants to accumulate $4,000. Whoops. All right. Now we get to the interest rate. It's 15% uh, per year compounded monthly. So we got our annual interest rate, which uh, as a decimal is 0. Uh, whoops, 0 0.15. All right. But it's compounded monthly. So I need to divide or cut my interest rate by dividing into 12 pieces so that I get a monthly interest rate. And so it's going to definitely be a decimal here. So I get 0 0.15 divided by 12, and I get 0 0.0125. All right. Now, uh, this money, because we're now we're looking at our N value, uh, is in being invested over two years. But it's compounded monthly. So the interest is being added 12 times every year. And so in two years... The interest again is being added 24 times. All right, so now I've got uh, got my information. And so now I'm going to substitute in. So again, I have my A here, which is $4,000. We're finding our P. I have my one plus I. So I have my one plus my I, which is this big decimal here, 0 0.125. And again, uh, that is going to be to the power of... 24. Same color here. There we go. All right. So I'm uh, going to simplify everything that I've underlined in green again. So here we go. Uh, we have $4,000. Uh, we have our P value. Uh, again, let's simplify that bracket. So I'm just going to have 1.0125 uh, and to the power of uh, 24. All right, uh, again, doing the exponent. So I got uh, 4,000 is equal to P. Let's see, I got to do that exponent. So I got 1.0125 to the power of 24 or 20 or 24. Uh, I get 1.35. All right, uh, so then our final step here again, this is the only difference in what we've been doing before is that we're going to solve for P. And to get P by itself, I'm going to divide by this one point. Three, five. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. All right. And so those 1.35s divide each other out. And so if I take 4,000 and divide it by 1.35, I get uh, $2,962. And uh, don't forget the 96 cents. And that will be presently or my principal that needs to be invested uh, to get that $4,000. There we go. So there's one where we are compounding periods weren't easy, where we did have to adjust the I and the N because, again, it was compounded monthly. When it's annual, you don't have to do that. The other five, you do. Uh, let's try a different one here. Uh, if a student wants to buy... Uh, a car, I should say, missing a little things there, of uh, an $18,000 car two years from now when they get their license. Uh, how much would they have to invest now at a rate 9% compounded weekly? Again, those are the key words there, compounded weekly. All right, so again, we got our compound interest formula. A is equal to P times uh, 1 plus I. Uh, to the power of n. All right, so let's see here. We need to accumulate enough money to buy an eighteen thousand dollar car. All right, so that's how much we need, or this person needs in two years. All right, we want to know how much money they should have now saved up. All right, now we get to the tougher part, figuring out the I value. Now it says nine percent compounded weekly, so nine. Converted to a decimal is 0 0.09. But 
but it's compounded weekly. So I have to turn this interest rate into a weekly interest rate. And so I'm going to have to take that 0 0.09 and divide it by 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. And uh, if I do that, I take my 0 0.09 divided by 52, I get 0 0.0017. All right, uh, next up to the N value. All right, so the N, we got uh, two years they're saving up, but it's compounded weekly, which means that interest is being added 52 times a year. So I'm gonna take my two and multiply by 52 and get 104. So the interest can be added 104 times. All right, well, We've got all our information here, so it's time to substitute in. And so I have A is equal to uh, P. Let's see, in the brackets here, I got one plus I. Well, I got the one, and then I'm gonna add the I there. Just gonna kind of skip a step of uh, 0 0.17. All right, and this is going to be to the power of 104. Whoa, I messed up here, is in that uh, I know the A. That in there. There we go. Uh, okay, and see if I can move. Nope. Uh, let's see, move that 104. There we go. Okay. All right, so my next step is, uh, well, I'm going to do this exponent, simplify things. All right, so I've got my 18,000 times uh, or is equal to p times well i'm definitely going to need my calculator for this one 1. 1.00017 to the power of 104 i got 1.197 oops seven okay and then my final step as usual i want to get p by itself so i'm going to divide both sides by this 1.19 197 do the same thing to this 18,000 here. I got my 1.197. And let's see, I divide those two out. And uh, how much am I going to need here to uh, have a, be able to afford a car in two years? Uh, let's see here. Take my 18,000, divide it by 1.197, and I get $15,037.59. And I know for me as a high school student, just making six eighty-five an hour uh, at my job. No chance I could save up fifteen thousand dollars. But that's some people can. I did have somebody in high school who saved up twelve thousand dollars and bought a car. So worked a lot of hours though. But there we go. So again, just working with our compound interest formula, and this time instead of solving for a, we solve for p, which again has two different names. Can be called the principal or present value. Again, just like my little I here, sometimes you'll see in the formulas, it has a little R. Whoops, a little R. Same thing there. What I stands for interest rate. R stands for interest rate as well. So some people pick the little I, some people pick the R. I for interest, R for rate. All right, folks.